I am so happy to be here at Florissant Valley with two of the most special people who ever walked on our campus, Mrs. Underwood and her daughter Kathy. Today she's going to share with us, and so is Kathy, a little bit of their experience over the long history of receiving the Underwood Award. More importantly, they're going to share about David Underwood and who they are and who their family is, and we will then share what that means to Florissant Valley. So I'm so glad you're here. Can I start with the first question? Sure. Yes. Okay. First, I want to ask, when were you and Dave born? Okay, Dave was born in, uh, in near Ava, Illinois. Okay. On the family farm. And he was born on December the 26th, 1925. Wow. I was born at my home in North St. Louis on January the 1st, 1928. So did you ever envision a community college? Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so will you share a story about how you and Dave met for us? Now, this is a long one. Is that OK? okay? <laughs> we would love a long story. OK, when I was about seven or eight years old, their family moved into a house behind, behind ours. And so that way I got to meet Dave's sister, Esther, who was 12 years older than Dave and Dave's brother Carl and Dave. So they lived there about two or three years. And then when they moved, Esther was a friend of ours and she kept in touch with us over the years. So when Dave got drafted into the service, mm -hmm. he went in the Navy, Esther asked me if I wanted to write to him. So I said, sure. <laughs> so they were pen pals. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so then when he came home from the service, Esther brought him over for a visit. And she said, Dave doesn't have any friends here anymore. They've all moved, or some are still in the service, and some didn't make it back. So he doesn't really have any friends anymore. Well, I was pelting around with some kids from high school and I said, well, we're going roller skating Saturday. Perfect. <laughs> Do you want to go? And he said, sure. So that's how we got started again. And then he went on to college, to Central Missouri State College. And we just kind of wrote back and forth to each other. And then it was later on, I don't know if it was the last year, of college or what, I don't remember what year it was, but he asked me if I, if we could get engaged. And I said, sure. Oh, sure. So, oh, sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so. Very romantic. We got engaged. <laughs> and then we both decided that he should finish his education before we got married. So then he went on to Columbia and he got his master's degree. While he was at Columbia, he was still in the Navy Reserves. He was called back into the Korean War. Oh, longest engagement in the history of he, he did, mankind. He did <laughs> get to finish his degree before he went in. Really? So, yes. So when he got back, <laughs> he said, I think maybe we better get married now <laughs> before something else comes up. That's right. Stop writing letters, start talking to each other. Right, exactly. <laughs> we wrote oh. so many letters because I wrote letters in college and we wrote letters in college under the war. And then, so we got married. I didn't, never wanted to get married in the cold weather because I didn't like cold weather. But this was in December. And so we got married at beautiful Sacred Heart Church in North St. Louis. I know that um, church very well. Do you? Of course. In January the 31st. And it was 70 degrees. And it turned to 70 degrees in the afternoon. And we went out to Forest Park to take pictures without coats. Wow. So it was really a beautiful day. Oh, see. And a wonderful wedding. It waited for you. That beautiful day waited for you. Right, it did, mm -hmm. yes, after all those years. <laughs> so what was Dave like as a father to uh, you, Kath and Dan? My father was, both my parents, very loving, very encouraging. Um, there was never any negativity in our house at all. And um, 
the some of the things that I remember uh, about my childhood with my father was he was the only driver in the family until my brother was 16. My mom didn't drive, so he was responsible for getting us everywhere. <laughs> and he would take me to the county library every two weeks, and I'd get my six books and and um, you know read through them, and he'd take me back two weeks later and. And I found out later that as a child, he did the same thing. He and his brother would go to wherever they were living, the nearest library, they'd get their books, and then they'd switch books, so they'd have 12 books to read in the (laughs) two weeks. So he was an overachiever, I guess. But um, I do remember him encouraging me to kind of expand my reading palette, I guess. And when I was in high school, he was suggesting some books for the summer, and he suggested Great Expectations. And I, you know, he was a big Dickens fan, and I read the book, and I really enjoyed it. And he was very pleased. I remember feeling so proud of myself because my dad was pleased that I liked a book he recommended. And um, other things that I remember is uh, when I was in grade school, they had this uh, honor roll students would win four tickets to a Cardinal baseball game. My brother and I were both honor roll winners so we had our we won our tickets and I was pretty young and less than enthused you know baseball tickets and um, so my dad one day the Cardinal baseball game was on TV on a weekend and he said come here I want I want you to see this and so I came over and he pulled out a legal pad drew a scorecard he taught me all about the game we watched the whole game kept score I learned to keep score I learned about the the game and it after that those tickets seemed to be a reward now that was a pretty good thing and my love of baseball really started when he took the time to do that and another thing that we spent a lot of time with was photography he wanted to learn um, about photography and I'm sure that somebody here at the campus clued him in. I'm sure he was hanging around the photo lab trying to find out how do you do this, how do you do that. And um, so he set up a dark room in our basement and I spent a lot of time with him. He would let me agitate the film and, and, you know, move the paper around in the developer and watch as it magically appeared. And uh, I spent a lot of time with him doing that and I I learned a lot and learned to appreciate photography um, as as a hobby and also to view photographs and look at, you know, it's kind of an art appreciation um, thing. And so we spent a lot of time with those kind of things. And as I look back, you know, I never saw my dad as a teacher. He was always my dad. But when I look back on these kind of stories, I think he was always teaching us, always teaching us. And I guess that's what a natural born teacher does. (laughs) That's for sure. That's the best kind of educator, isn't it? Mm, When you don't really realize you're getting the education. Uh, I saw a quote one time that said, education is what you remember after you're out of school. That's true. There you go. A lot of it is, yes. Absolutely. And you made sure that you remembered things long after you had that experience. Yep. Oh, that's great. And he, you know, as 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 a parent, he looked at things, changes in like transportation he saw that at that time when we were children passenger trains were going away it was freight trains and he had us go on a short vacation taking a passenger train because he wanted us to have the experience I'm kind of and he also took us to Chicago one time remember that trip on a turbo prop because it's all going to be jet planes and I want you to be able to (laughs) to experience that really yes Wow, so he was always fabulous. thinking of, of giving us life experiences that would be important to us and memorable. You and know, I'm sure it was to memorable things. to him watching you learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, It's a thrill, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, we know Dave started working at St. Louis Community College in 1963 at the age of 38. And then he taught nine years in the St. Louis schools. Then he served as chair of the Communications and Humanities Division. He was the Associate Dean of Instruction. Then he became the Dean of Instruction in 1969. What do you remember? Do you have stories about that time? Well, I remember that he taught in the temporary buildings. 
and he also taught over at uh, McClure at night on some classes. They didn't have enough class sure. classroom space, right. so he was mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. And so he taught there also. And he became an administrator throughout that. How was that? Well, when he became administrator, he enjoyed all the people of the college and the students. And so he still walked the campus and visited with the students and the teachers. And uh, he really enjoyed all of his time visiting with those people. And he would come home and tell us about all the great people that he worked with. I'm sure they so. went home and talked about the great dean they had. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so did Dave ever talk about what he liked most about working on the Florissant Valley campus? Well, I think he liked, he really liked the uh, concept of the junior college, I think, right. or yeah. the community yeah. college, junior right. college back yeah. then. <laughs> but I, I remember him telling me, um, he was very excited, enthusiastic about what the junior college would bring to uh, the future of education, because he understood, for, I mean, he went to college on the GI Bill. Sure. You know, he was not a man of wealth, and he understood that not everybody had the opportunity financially or logistically to go to a university, and he felt that the junior college was a great pathway for people to advance their education without having to go through the expenditure of a university. And it was local, you could be at home, you could be married and be able to take classes locally and improve yourself. And he really, he really believed in that concept. I remember him talking to me about that. And then it's all true. Uh, Mrs. Underwood, remarkably, we think you've only missed one announcement of the David L. Underwood Memorial Lecture Award and one lecture over the 44 year life of the award. Can you summarize what attending these events meant to you? Well, it was always very emotional for me and amazing that all of these people were such great teachers and how much they enjoyed their jobs and also how much that they worked above and beyond what they really needed to do. And they were very much like Dave in that manner. And I think that they were just born to be teachers. <laughs> That's high praise. Mm-hmm. It very is. Very much. So, Cass, you've always accompanied your mother and been a very big part of the Underwood legacy at Florissant Valley. Can you share a story about being young or being around your dad? Yes, I think, um, you know, I, I had written a little letter for Teresa when she won about my experience with going to uh, Flow Valley half a day in the afternoon in my senior year of high school. I, um, I was only 18, you know, when my father passed away. So I was really, he was my dad. It was, I wasn't seeing him as the adult, you know, that he really was. You don't see them as the person they are to other people. But in... In my senior year, I went to McClure in the morning and Flow Valley in the afternoon. We only had one car, so um, that meant I drove Dad to work, dropped him off at the bottom of the hill because he wanted the exercise to walk up to the top of the hill, <laughs> and I'd go to class and come back, and then um, my classes at Flow Valley would end, and I'd go hang out at his office and wait for him until we could go home. And um, couple things that come to mind. One time I was waiting and one of the secretaries came up to me and said, oh, I hear you baked a cake the other day that was delicious. And I realized that my father talked about me at work. It was shocking. <laughs> Who thought, you know? And I found that he was, he was not sitting in a desk, at a desk all day like I imagined. He was more often not at his office when I got there to leave and his secretary Lois, wonderful person, she would say, he'll be here soon, he's out uh, taking care of something. And I think at that time I really realized that he was an important sought after person in his job when, you know, he was just my dad. <laughs> so so the, the folklore of you being underneath his desk. I, I'm sorry, I cannot remember that. 
<laughs> I really, if I told that story, it's vanished from my mind by now. Yeah. I do remember as a child going to sleep to the sound of the manual typewriter keys. Mm -hmm. And now I look back and I think, what was all that typing? You know, was he um, typing lesson plans probably when yeah, he taught, you know, sure but I just remember that typing every night when I went to bed. <laughs> oh, what a great memory. And I would like to add that even as dean of instruction, mm -hmm. she said he was always around the campus, and he did. He visited with the teachers, with the students, and he really enjoyed all the conversations with them. And he would come home and tell us about all the great people that teach teachers mm -hmm. or the great people or teachers or whatever yeah. who he worked with yeah. so he really really enjoyed I, the talking to them and visiting with them he had a lot of respect for his co-workers yeah, and for the people on the campus you right. could tell he held he held everyone in really high regard if i i think that when the campus started i really think it was a team of really excellent people you know, and and that feeds on itself, and it kind of grows. And I really feel that he was in an environment that was perfect for him. Yeah, he had a lot of you friends. know. Oh, I can imagine. I mm -hmm. can imagine. And that tradition continues even to today. I know, and it's remarkable. It really is. So there's a photo of you and Kathy listening to President Sis' dedication of the campus library at the David L. Underwood Memorial Library. And uh, what do you remember about that day? You know, I really don't remember a lot other than being a little puzzled and a little amazed at what was going on. And Dan was at the event. Yes, mm -hmm. he was there too. It was, we were still, I think, a little bit in shock. You know, what has happened to sure, us? You know, of the loss. Yeah. how can my dad be gone? Of course, you know? of course. And um, really kind of... Uh, I guess I couldn't believe my dad was just my dad. And here's these people honoring him this way. You know, it was it was pretty surprising, actually, you know, but wonderful. I mean, uh, remarkable. How I, right. I don't know. It said an awful lot about how the people he interacted with felt about him. Right. That's right. And yeah. over the years, how they feel about both of you. Mm hmm. So in the 44 years of the Underwood Award, soon to be 43 years, soon to be 44, you've met many of the recipients. What do you find are some of their shared characteristics? What makes a great teacher? Well, I think that they all really enjoyed their job. And they always did, you know, above and beyond what they really needed to do. And they were always interested in what they were doing. And I think that they were just born teachers. <laughs> so Everyone seems to be passionate about right. what they do. And it's amazing to me the different fields and how they, I love listening to the lectures because they're so different. And even though I'm not a teacher or a student here, I am inspired by every one of them. You know, they just have an energy and a dedication to making a difference. And, you know, you don't see that everywhere. No, and I'm sure they're trying to live up to the tradition that they're part of very much. Um, what do you think Dave would say if he could look down and remark about his legacy? I think he would be very surprised because he didn't think he was doing anything special. He was just being Dave. Which was very special. A lot of times special people don't realize, though, how special they are, I think. Well, we want to thank you, as always, for your continued support of this prestigious award and for sharing with us today so that we can know you better and through knowing you, know him better. So thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.